Okay, so hello and welcome to the fuckfest that is National no, Nish 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 you know what I mean. Canals um team deathmatch. And yeah, well okay, I didn't do particularly well. Well yeah, I got a positive KD. Which isn't too bad for this. But anyway. Okay, so this may be a new series, it may not be a new series. Or oh, just a singular episode or whatever. But anyway, I felt this story needed more publicising. So, <sighs> I told you what it is in the background. And yeah, let me proceed with this amazing story. This is a World War II story, by the way. So if you're not interested of that, you can just bug off now. Or you can just watch the commentary. And, uh, the gameplay. Just a anyway, so. A story of Joseph R. Burrell. Beryl, I think. Beryl. I probably guy can't pronounce names very well. <coughs> yeah, anyway, he was an American paratrooper joining the 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment of the uh, 101 Airborne Scream Eagles Division, specializing in radio comms and demolitions. In 1942, even though he just gra uh, graduated from high school in the same year, was given a scholarship to the University of Notre Dame. Like his fellow paratroops, he was stationed in England and after nine months of training. Joe then went on to successfully complete missions in occupied France in April and May of 1944, delivering gold to the French resistance to help their effort. However, on the 6th of June 1944, Joe, with his stick, which is 13 men, I believe, I think so, yep, in SC 47, which I'm sure you've all heard of him. Uh, Band of Brothers is basically the same sort of uh, it's an aeroplane, which was hit badly, started going down. So at 120 meters from the ground, Joe had to uh, <coughs> parachute out. That was a terrible death there. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, he he had to um, parachute out at that low altitude, which isn't a very good idea. But anyway. They came under fire, and that's what caused him to do that. So after landing in uh, saint Combe du mont Sergeant Burl, he, he, he was a sergeant, lost contact with his fellow paratroopers, but succeeded, <laughs> still, because of, obviously he was a demo man, in blowing up a uh, power station, and uh, actually performed quite a few other sabotage missions before being captured by German soldiers a few day days later, which, to me, is just... Incredible, and even though he lost all his men, as in not died, but like lost them, um, he still got on with the mission and just started blowing up things that needed being blown up, which is good of him. Anyway, yeah, but unfortunately, the Germans captured him, which is not good, and then he was sent to a uh, German POW camp. So over the next seven months, Burl was held in seven different German prisons, which he managed to escape twice, only re only to be recaptured each time. Burl and his fellow prisoners had been hoping to find the Soviet army, which was a short distance away. After the second escape, in which he and his companions set up for Poland, but boarded a train to Berlin by mistake, which I don't actually particularly know how you can do that, because I think I thought it was Berliner. Poland are quite different words. But anyway, uh, Burl maybe didn't have signs. <laughs> I don't know, but not the best thing. Anyway, Burl was turned over to the Gestapo by the German civilian. Beaten and tortured, he was released to the German military after officials stepped in and determined that Gestapo had no um, thing over the prisoners of war, jurisdiction over the prisoners of war. The Gestapo were about to shoot Burl and his comrades, claiming that he was an American spy of parachute in Berlin. So yeah, basically he was quite lucky then, so he was saved by <laughs> the German military. Um basically because the Gestapo would wanted to kill him because they thought that he was a spy. Well, claimed he was a spy, much like the Russians claimed that people were spies. But anyway, we won't go into that. Um, so yeah, he was taken to the POW of Stalag IIC camp in Altdros, from which he escaped in early January 1945. He then cleverly headed east, hoping to meet up with the Soviet army. Encountering a Soviet tank brigade in the middle of January, 
He raised his hands, holding a pack of Lucky Strike cigarettes, and shouted in Russian, Amanskini Tushka, which uh, I cannot pronounce, but I'm guessing that means something about American comrade. So anyway, Burrow was eventually able to persuade the battalion commander, who incidentally was the legendary Alexandra Shkomensko, uh, the only female tank officer that ranked in World War II, to allow him to fight alongside the unit its way to Berlin, thus beginning a month-long sting in the Soviet tank battalion, where demolitions expertise was appreciated. So basically, um, Burl was a paratrooper, and managed to gain the uh, friendship of the Soviet army and work with them, which is just just amazing. Burl's new battalion was one that freed his former camp, the Stalag one, at the end of January. But in the first week of February, he was wounded during an attack of Stuka dive bombers, which <laughs> it has to be the best thing ever heard. Let's be honest. To uh, gone through all that to do so much good to blow up things that uh, interrupt German supplies and everything like that and only now about a year later he um, he managed to get injured but anyway he was evacuated to a Soviet hospital in Landsberg at Dyrvorth now um, something in Poland where he received a visit from the Soviet Marshal Grigory Zuvakov who, intervened with the, by the only non-Soviet in the hospital, learned his story through an interpreter. Intrigued, sorry. And provided Burrell with the official papers in order to rejoin American forces. Joining a Soviet military convoy, Burrell arrived at his US embassy in Moscow in February 1945, only to learn that he'd been reported by the War Department as KIA on June 10th, 1944, on French soil. Now that's just just strange because even a funeral mass had been held in his honour in uh, Muskegon, and a bit had been published in local newspapers. So he 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 was reported dead, and here he was standing in front of the U.S. embassy. So unsure of his good faith, he placed him on marine marine guard in Metropole Hotel until his identity was established through fingerprints. So they didn't actually believe that he was a. Um, who we said he was, and he was like, oh my god. So anyway, Burl returned home from Mi to Michigan in uh, April April 21st, 1945, and celebrated VE Day two weeks later in Chicago. He was married to uh, John Holloway in 1946, who were uh, <laughs> incidentally in the same church, and by the same priest who held his funeral mass two years earlier. So I bet that was the biggest shock of his life, just seeing this guy walk up to him and go, oh, can you marry me? But I, well, I have die of day uh, funeral for you. It's all right, mate. Come back from the dead, just like Jesus. Anyway, so yeah, it's it's just just incredible. And yeah, he, he worked at uh, Brunswick Corporation for 28 years and retired as a shipping supervisor. So it, it was just just incredible story. I have no idea how you can do that. He um he is the only known American soldier to have served with both the United States Army and the Soviet Army in World War II, which is just just incredible. But how how you can have done that? that that's, that's why I wanted to uh, share this story, because I just found it one of the best stories I've ever heard in my life. It I actually heard it in my uh, work, because one of my uh, colleagues, or my boss, was going on a cycling trip and he was telling me about this story and I thought it's just, just amazing I've got to find out more about this and so yeah I, I discovered who it is so Joseph R. Burrell I'll probably put the Wikipedia page in it so you can have your own little reader route so yeah what else can I tell you to uh, fill out the rest of this video oh, itchy leg don't you just hate that anyway so yeah, um, oh yes, I personally am planning to join the army, I don't know if I told you this, but you probably picked it up anyway, so yeah, I'm planning to join the army myself, um, and I'm planning to go in one of the, uh, 
probably Royal Engineer unit and uh, become a bomb disposal expert because you know what I wanted the safest job in the British Army <laughs> and yeah but yeah I uh, might if I'm not successful in that however I will move on to uh, just do a normal infantry role and, and just, just shoot shit up and, and help people because I, I, I just love the army because I've got I've got another another story I'll probably expand on this uh, maybe in a later video but I um, my great great yeah my great great granddad um, called uh, was a Campbell no, that, that's irrelevant but I'm just saying it's a Campbell so he's a Scottish descendant and uh, yeah he was in the second Boer War uh, First World War and the Second World War which is just three wars is just incredible he was 16 when he joined up and was in the um, Black Watch Regiment in the Second Boer War and was placed um, as he was a rifle expert and placed as an outrider and put on the sides of the uh, thing to uh, scout out and it, it, he thoroughly enjoyed that he was uh, at the Battle of Spoin Cop and <laughs> he was impressed with that so much he actually named his house over after it which is still there now and yeah um, yeah, I think it's a school now actually but yeah he he, he brought back so many bloody souvenirs from it uh, yeah so he did that but I think he was injured injured at it once and he was uh, brought back to Scotland but actually his family were then living in um uh, Nottingham I think it was so he had to walk all the way back from Scotland to Nottingham because he had no money <laughs> or an army so yeah it, 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 <laughs> it was quite impressive bearing in mind he'd been like wounded in the arm or something so oh well so that's that part of it then he, he uh, joined up in World War 1 he, he joined up afterwards and yeah, in World War One, and uh, he was made a Lewis gun team that was on the uh, part of the front line, and unfortunately, he was told to stay still and hold the line while the rest of them retreated. I can't remember what battle this is. It it is a known battle, but I can't tell you what it is. He was hold, told to hold the line uh, with a couple of other people down the line as well and all that. And yeah, he uh, was found because they'd, they'd pushed the Germans back at the time. He was found still giving orders to his crew on the uh, Lewis gun team. However, every single one of them had been killed. He in he he didn't realise he was completely shell shot from it and he did he had no idea whatsoever. And that took him a quite a while to get over it and But he he was unique to all the other veterans I've known because he all he would do he would talk about it and he loved telling people the stories of it. I wasn't told this by him because he it's one of those things where he's not even sure if it actually happened, it was so freakishly unreal but yeah he did that and then <laughs> World War 2 started uh, he was he was quite old then he was in his very early 60s late 50s when this broke out <laughs> and they uh, it, he was actually too old to join and they got quite pissed off at him because he was constantly t asking them, can, can I join, can I join, can I join, can I join, can I join. And in the end I just gave up and uh, <laughs> they allowed him to join, uh, join the Remy. And he, um, yeah. <laughs> but instead they just put him on a boat in the middle of the ocean and just kept him there for all <laughs> the whole war basically. And yeah, he, he absolutely loved it and such a humble man never ever took a promotion he, he 
got loads of offers, uh, what they call, I forgot what they called, but yeah, he got loads of those and it, it denied every single one of them. And medals were the same, the only one he would have would be the fact that he was in the war medals, the one that everybody was given. Because he never liked to be any different from the next man along. He's a great man, loved to have met him. But yeah, he, he was one of those. So, I really do hope that you enjoyed these stories because I I do absolutely love them. It's it's just brilliant talking about them and it's my favourite interest. So I'm glad that you have watched it all the way this far. And yeah, thank you. And comment if you want to see more of this. Anyway, thank you. And as you saw, I got a positive KD. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.